All right, the joint load diagram that we draw when we're analyzing a structure by the stiffness method is a diagram that we use to later calculate um, the JL matrix. And your JL matrix, remember, uh, is JL complete is equal to your joint load um, unrestrained over your joint load restrained, right? And in this video, I really just want to talk a little bit more about the joint load diagram, how we draw it, and why we draw the joint load, di the joint load diagram the way it is. So let's consider, let's consider a beam here, and it has a fixed end here and here, okay? And that's a fixed end, that's a fixed end, and then it has a roller here, all right? And then... This would be, um, let's call it element one and element two. So this, this beam has two spans, right? Element one and element two that are between the joints. Now let's pretend uh, we had a, a point load here and then on span one, um, right at the middle of that span. And then we had a, a uniformly distributed load here at two, and I'm just gonna call that W. Uh, that's not a W. This is a W. Okay? So when we look, when we draw joint load diagrams, we normally look at the span and we, we cut them very, very close to the joints and we do the analysis for that member or that um, element, right? So this would be element one. And if we cut, if we cut um, element two here and here, and we drew out the uh, element there, um, it would look something like this, right? And when we draw our loading back here, right, we have P here, and then we have that uniformly distributed load here. So this is uh, one and two. And we treat these elements as fixed beams or fixed end beams, right? And when we draw the joint load diagram, um, we the end reactions, the vertical, the shears, and the moments are drawn in the direction of the loading or the direction that causes um, the bending. So this element one, um, the, it would bend something like this, right? And element uh, two would bend something like this. So we draw the end reactions that cause this bending. In other words, if we have P going down here, then we have P going down here. I guess this would be P over, oops, P over two, P over two. And then our moment, our moment would be, would be this way because this is what causes this bending. And then same thing on element two. We draw the moment this way because that's what causes the bending. And then we have, of course, the reactions on the ends uh, going down. Now, why do we do this? And why is it called the joint load diagram when we're actually modeling these loads on the members? Well, if we look at this structure a little bit more in depth, I'm going to draw the joint here. I'll call this joint A. So here's joint A. Then you have um, element 1. Then you have that roller joint, right? I can call that B, and then that last support C. And then you have element two, and then you have that fixed end, C, B, and A, right? And let's draw our loadings um, on here really quick. Here's our loadings, right? This is element one. This is element two. This is P and this is W, right? So let's pretend for a second that we um, imagine these two elements to be fixed ends just as um, we were if we were calculating the joint load diagram. And let's just find their reactions um, assuming they're fixed ends. So you have a, a shear going up here, a shear going up here, P over 2, P over 2, 
and then so you have p over 2, p over 2, and then you have on this end you have vertical shears here, and then you have a, a moment here, a moment here, a moment here, and a moment here, right? So if we looked at the joints, the joints would have an equal and opposite moment and shear, right? So this shear is going up, this shear must be going down. This moment's going clockwise, this moment's going counterclockwise. Um, on this side, this moment's going counterclockwise, so that means this moment's going clockwise. And this shear is going up, that means this shear is going down on the joint, right? Equal and opposite. And that causes a reaction here at D to go up. Now, again, same thing here at C, you have a reaction going up, so you have a reaction going down. Here you have a clockwise moment, here you're going to have a counterclockwise. Um, and then here you're going to have uh, a shear going down and a moment going clockwise. The 